It's the next level. And now for the show that's truly too hot to handle. It's the melting pack, and it starts right now. Listening to the Melting Path. Here's your host, Pat Johnson. Well, thank you, Jerome. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the show, the Melting Path, the next level network. Today, kind of back to normal a little bit. We got some sports stuff, some baseball. It's not good baseball news. Uh, we may hear from the captain about the Flyers. It's not good about the Flyers either. And uh, we'll talk a little bit of Sixers as well. We have a song from our new friends, Archers. I can't wait. To badly sing that guitar riff. I'm really excited. Um, thanks to Taylor uh, again for that. So we'll go there and then uh, we'll do Hot TV Moms. And uh, yes, don't worry. Next week we will do Hottest TV Dads. Don't you worry. We got some good picks. I like these answers. I really do. And then um, is there anything else before our first thing that we forgot to do last week? I don't think so. Let's see. Hot TV Moms, Song from Archers, Baseball, Captain, Sixers. Nope, that's it. So uh, what we're going to start with today, though, because we forgot to do this last week, like I said I would, is we got to get mad because Domino's has this new promotion where they're, you've seen the commercials with the guy jumping through the sprinklers and slowing down for the old lady or whatever. They're giving you a $3 credit if you go pick up your own order. So the, the whole thing is like, oh, be your own delivery driver, as if people have not been carrying out pizza for 55, 60, 80, 90 years, whatever. They're acting like it's a new thing that you go pick up your own pizza. I don't know. but. The thing that really bothers me about this is, so they give you, let me just run down the whole thing with the credit, because I looked at the, uh, the fine print, I'll, I'll, I'll rattle it off for you. So you place an order online carryout. So this is only for an online order if you're going to go pick it up between January 31st and May 22nd. So you place that order, then you can claim a $3 coupon code by Sunday of the same week. So you order on Wednesday, and you have to claim the coupon by Sunday. So you get that, and then that $3 is good for on another online carryout order from Monday to Sunday the following week. So it's good for a week. You got to claim it by Sunday, use it by the following Sunday. One code per day. And I just like, it's just really, like it doesn't seem like you're saving money, you as the customer. It just really, I don't know. So you order... One week, you order online and you carry out, you get a $3 code, use it in a week. That's basically what it is. So Domino's has to know that not everybody's going to follow up on this. They're going to forget to get the code. They're not going to order two, three weeks in a row. So they will take whatever. I mean, people will do it. I'm sure people have that they have gone and said, yep, we're going to order Domino's two weeks in a row. Maybe we're ordering lunch for the office or whatever, right? So we're going to do that and we'll save three bucks, which really covers what tax maybe not even you get a little like you get you know the breadsticks for two dollars instead of five dollars right so how much how much am i as a customer really saving three like a three dollar coupon what is that really getting me nothing so they're doing this this virtual nothing i'll call it maybe that's incorrect maybe my math is off i don't know or care it just really bugs me that they are willing to give you the customer a credit for three dollars instead of paying their delivery drivers more money. I don't understand it, because I don't know if you know this, but the reason that it is strongly encouraged, and in my opinion, the reason we got to tip the pizza delivery people and whoever, is because they make below minimum wage, right? They don't make a lot of money. They make like four bucks an hour, maybe, right? At least that's what it was a few years ago. Um, haven't talked to anybody lately, but let's just work off that. Let's just say that uh, these companies are not paying their delivery drivers eight bucks an hour which would be not great, but better. So as far as I know, they're not, I know I just said, I may have torpedoed the whole thing, but tell you what, delivery drivers, um, if you don't mind sharing with me, how much do you make an hour? Like how, I guess so then the question becomes, how reliant are you really on somebody giving a good tip? I would think you have to be, you know, hoping for those tips to make a decent amount of money, right? I would think. Anyway, so Domino's decided, hey, we're not going to pay our drivers more money. Instead, we're going to pay customers $3 in a store credit if they come and carry out their order so we don't have to use the driver and pay them at all. And 
All right. I, I, there's something about this just seems really slimy and gross to me. I don't like it. But again, this is a company that spent $50 million on ads uh, about local businesses. Like, hey, order from the local business. You've seen the commercials, right? Order from local businesses, skip the fees for whatever. We're going to give them vouchers or something like that. Do you know how much money they gave it? So they spent $50 million for those advertisements. Do you know how much money total they have given those businesses? $100,000. And to Domino's, a pretty big chain, you know, they make money. Domino's is a profitable company. As far as I know, $100,000 to them is nothing. And you're like, oh, look at us helping all these small businesses when you're giving them change out of your pocket, you know, relatively speaking. So it just, it just rubs me the wrong way. I know a corporation, I shouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't, maybe shouldn't be this peeved about it, but I am. It bothers me that they're, they're holding up this thing like, hey, you, we're going to pay you to get your own pizza. Just pay your drivers and send it to me. I promise that'll be better. Tell you what, pay my driver that $3 credit instead and get them up to, uh, to a decent wage for the night so then they can deliver my food and I will tip them more money. I feel like that's going to make me, like if I order from Domino's again, I don't know if I will, but not because of this, because there are other places that are cheaper and taste better. Um... If I do, I'm going to end up tipping the driver way more money because I know they're getting screwed. I just, it just bugs me that they're they're putting this out there like, look at how great we are. Look, we say we got all this money for these small businesses and now we're giving you money when instead some of that money could be going to your delivery drivers and your employees and all that. I don't know. It just bugs me that a company is bragging about, you know, look at all, look at all this good we're doing when the good you could be doing is paying the people who work in your stores. All right, so there you go. That's, I don't know. I keep seeing the commercials and I'm really bummed out about it. It just, I'm just, just pay your drivers, pay your employees, pay your drivers, pay whoever. I don't need the credit. I don't need the money, like the coupon or whatever. Pay your driver. I will spend the extra three bucks. I don't mind. So there you go. Plus if I'm ordering from Domino's more than once a month, I must have enough money to do that. Meaning I'm not sweating $3. So that's me. I don't know. All right, let's do something fun. Because I, I wanted to get that out because I've been seeing the commercials. It just bothers me, and I'm not a fan of it. And it's just, does it make me want to not order? For, well, it makes me not want to carry out my food from Domino's. I think that's it. Because, yeah, I mean, I'll just, just pay the driver and tip the driver more. That's what it makes me want to do. Because their, you know, their food is fine. Um, like I said, there are other places around here, that, so it's not like a first choice for us. But I don't know corporations. That story is mainly for Kenny. Uh, Kenny, if you're out there, I know you're out there and you listen at two times speed, which is kind of crazy to me. Maybe I shouldn't have told everyone that, but it's fine. Uh, that's mainly for you, Kenny, because I know you'll agree with me that corporations are terrible. So. <laughs> so there you go with that. Let's do something fun. All right, now we're off that. We're off the soapbox. We're good. Uh, we got that out of our system. So let's do this. Our question for this week, who is the hottest TV mom? We did favorite TV mom. Separate question. This came up the other day. We were watching Drake and Josh, and I asked, hey, where does Drake's mom, played by Nancy Sullivan, rank on the hot TV mom scale? And uh, nobody picked her, so not high, I guess. And uh, then I thought this would be a really fun question for the show, hottest TV mom, and Bill immediately, well, no, he took a beat, and then he said, uh, modern family, Claire. Modern, or maybe he said, maybe he gave the actor, uh, who's the actor, Julie? Julie Bowens, is that her name? Uh, Claire from Modern Family, you know the one. Ben said Claire as well. So two votes right off the bat for Claire Dunphy. I like it, that's a good pick. Uh, let's see here, where are we going? Where are we going? Vito, sticking with Modern Family. Gloria Pritchett immediately jumped to mind because, well, it's Sofia Vergara. There you go. Solid, solid pick. Sply up, my friend, thank you. Kirsten Cohen from the OC, portrayed by Kelly Rowan. Wholesome, down to earth, had gorgeous eyes. She's actually my pick. She is, yes. And I, I mean, I did read the rest of these, but it was days ago, so I forgot. I already forgot who's on here, so maybe I'll change my pick as we go down. Thanks, buddy. Dale says, Peggy Bundy. Kirsten agreed also. That, so that's two for Peggy Bundy. I like it. Katie Seagal's awesome. Fantastic. Now that I've watched the show, some of it anyway, I get that reference. Uh, <laughs> Ron the Dial says, Edith Bunker. Serious answer. Maybe Mary Louise Parker, who played someone in Weeds. I never watched the show. Uh, he says, I don't know. 
There are so many hot people on TV. That's a good point. There are. That's why I wanted to do this. Uh, Keith says, for me, no question, Lorelai Gilmore. She's quick-witted, sassy, funny, and gorgeous. Damn it! That's a really good pick. Oh, man. Wow, do I go the OC or Gilmore Girls? I don't know. God damn it, Keith. That's a great pick. Uh, Rhiannon says, Rhiannon, Rhiannon, again, I can't read. Jillian Anderson's sex therapist character on the show, sex education, obviously. I never watched that show, but Jillian Anderson will always get points for me, so thank you for that. Clockshot says, Carrie Russell, during her run on the Americans, the Americans, the Americans, there we go, was nice to look at. Didn't watch that one either, but I did look up all these people to make sure I knew who they were, and I agree with both Carrie Russell and uh, Mary Louise Parker, so that's solid. And Edith Bunker, obviously. Come on, Ron the Dial. What a great first pick. Uh, Weather Vane says, Aunt Becky. Oh, that's a great pick. Yes. Personal issues aside, we're talking about hot TV moms. We're not talking about, you know, would you, I don't know, would you raise a family with them or something? I don't know, what, what, what am I saying? Aunt Becky, great pick. Nark says, Louis Anderson and Baskets. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, that's a pick. We might have a winner. Oh, we should have done that one last. We might have a winner on that one. Johnny Oneball says, Patricia Heaton does it for me. Nice. Nice. Solid pick. I like it. Triple A says, Betty Draper from Mad Men, maybe. Can't think of anything else and watching that show right now. Hey, you know what? First of all, that's a good pick. Second of all, the fact that you made the pick based on the show you were watching, I'll give you a bonus point for that. Thanks, man. Uh, Lockjaw says, Topanga. Oh, that's a good one. God damn it. That's three good ones. I can't decide between these people. Come on. And uh, finally, oh, oh, this might be the winner. Glenn says, Marge Simpson. There you go. Oh, man. There, that's a good... No, we, see, we already did Sexiest Cartoon Character. And uh, my buddy Prince wrote a novel about Alexandria from Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> but, oh, man, I got to make a decision here. There are real some really good... Oh, some really good picks. God damn it. Lockjaw throwing Topanga into the mix right at the end. That's really... Oh, man. That is hard. That is really... God damn it. That's tough. You know what? I, I got to go with the OG for me. It's Kirsten from the OC. Kelly Rowan. Got to be. Got to be. Splia, you're my winner here. All right, real quick. We're going to have to shoehorn this in because I forgot that uh, I did a whole thing about we're doing a bracket for Hot TV Moms because we got 16. And then I realized we only have 15. Then I thought, you know what? Nope. We're going back to where it started. Audrey Parker from Drake and Josh is going to be the last one to fill out the bracket. So I'll have to, I don't know, fit this in somewhere and then take out the other time when I mentioned it toward the end of the show. So it's going to be a little wonky. My bad. Blame it on my mushy dad brain. Uh, but yeah, the bracket is live right now. I'm trying to figure out, uh, at least I hope it will be live by the time you hear this at themeltypat.com so you can make your selections. And then, uh, yeah, run all the way through the bracket, and then I'll tally up all the winners, I guess, and we'll go from there. And then next week, we will do Hot TV Dads and try to crown a, I don't know, like prom king and queen, like hottest TV mom and dad. We'll go from there. So, yes, we have, I, I'm going to cut all the other stuff out. Uh, we have our 16 Hot TV Moms as voted by you and me. And so, yeah, make your choices. I'll try to figure out the bracket thing, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But all right, so let's get back to whatever we were doing. All right, so there you go. There's your hot TV mom. We're almost at a consensus, and now I invented a new game, I guess, or uh, or came up with an idea. Came up with a not invented a new thing, but came up with a fun thing to get some uh, to get your votes and your thoughts and, and have some fun and go from there. So this is going to be a lot of work for me, but I don't care. It's going to be fun. So there you go. Um, if you don't like sports, it's almost your time to get on out of here. And I thank you for being here. I'm sorry I rambled so much about hot moms. Uh, if that bothered you. Well, next week I'll ramble about hot dads. So I think we're going to be fine. Maybe is that, is that enough balance? I don't know. Anyway, because uh, <laughs> after the song, we're doing sports. We got baseball. We got Sixers. We got Flyers. It's not a lot, but uh, people, some people don't like sports at all. So I'll let you know that uh, that's what's going on, man and woe man and they friend. Is that the right way to say that? I don't know. Somebody let me know that too. What's the proper... Um, the proper way to address someone who is non-binary is me saying they friend offensive. There we go. Maybe that's what I need to know. Because my brain is mush. I got a kid. My brain is mush. I can't keep up with all this stuff. So I'm trying. 
All right, so there we go. Why did we turn serious just now? I don't know. But we're going to go to a song from our new friends, Archers. Again, thanks to our friend Taylor for this, for shouting them out. And uh, thanks to the band for saying, yes, go ahead, of course, play our song. Wonderful. They call themselves the softest boys in metal. There, That's good. I like that a lot. You can find more from them at archersmerch.com. That's A-R-C-H-E-R-S-M-E-R-C-H.com. And that'll be in the show notes. I'll try to get their socials. That's all. It's all in there, actually. The website is very informative. So we're going to play this song. It is called Blanket Fort. It is not safe for work again. Our new friends, Archers, here inside the Melting Pat on the Next Level Network. There you have it, our new friends, Archers, with their, is it their latest? I don't even know. It's called Blanket Fort. It's the Melting Pat, the next level network. Almost lost all my breath on that one. <laughs> but there you go, archersmerch.com for more from them. Oh, man, that was a good one. You know what? Friends of the show. Write solos in your song so I can sing them, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. Again, Blanket Fort. Did we say that already? It's fine. Uh, thanks to Taylor for that. Thanks to Archers for the tune. Go check them out. Tell them I sent you, and they will not know what you're talking about, but they'll say, is that the guy who sang our solo on the show? Is that the guy? And then I'll say, yeah, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, it's that guy. Um, why did I don't need to. Why did we have to do that? I don't know. Uh, there you go. That's all. <laughs> That's all for you if you don't like sports. I guess I should put it that way. 
Because again, baseball, Sixers, and Flyers, maybe if we hear from the captain. That is all. Thanks for hanging out. For the rest of us, let's uh, real quick. This might not even be like a full segment, I guess. We'll just put it all together. Um, well, then the captain. But we had some news on the Major League Baseball lockout. The sides met for the last, I don't know, 9, 10, 12 days, whatever it was. And they negotiated. They went back and forth. They tried. They did not reach a deal. So Commissioner Manfred came out on Monday? No, Tuesday. And said, all right, we got to cancel some games. So the first two series of the year, which totals about 91 or 92 games, they have been canceled because the sides could not reach an agreement. And it's just really disappointing. Like, I'm not surprised by it because everything that I've been reading and hearing about says that all the, like the whole time the sides have been really far apart and it's all about money. And we've talked about it plenty on the show, but I'm not shocked. I'm just really disappointed that there wasn't some way they could at least, you know, let's play under the old agreement until we work on it while we work on a new one. So nobody loses any money, right? I think that's, and I'm not just talking about players and owners and stuff like that. I'm talking about stadium workers and the people who work in stores and restaurants and whatnot surrounding the stadiums who depend on that money, 81 games a year, a lot of people come out. And don't just go to the game that, oh, let's go to the bars, go have dinner, whatever. So now that money's gone, right? So for the first two series of the year, however many, you know, 91 games worth of income for these people who work in and around the stadium is just gone. And there's no, as far as I can see, there's no way to get that back. And it's just a mess. Like it's more than millionaires and billionaires. It's everybody else involved in the, let's call it production, day-to-day of the game and all the things that surround it. Not a game, but it is the game in this case. Um, It's just the whole mess, and I really hope we get a resolution soon. And I don't know when that could be. Uh, I think, conservatively, we're looking at Memorial Day for opening day, which is not good. That's, you know, a month plus of games and money lost for, you know, players, owners, and all these people around the stadium. And also, I said this before when I talked about TV shows that take, like, two-month breaks for some reason, that if you have people on the fringe of the show, like, oh, the show's pretty good, I don't love it, ah, we'll see, and then you take two months off, those people who were considering your show are never going to come back. So if you have people on the fringe of, like, oh, maybe I'll check out this baseball team, maybe we'll go to the game, maybe we'll do this, buy a shirt, whatever. If you're taking off, maybe it's even less for base because you're spending mo- you're spending money, right, to go to the game or support the team in some way, right? So maybe there's a lower threshold for how long baseball cannot be on before these people decide to go do something else and never come back to it. So it's a whole thing. It's messy. It's disgusting. And again, I'm not surprised. And I'm really just bummed out that Manfred was up there laughing and smiling and all this. And Manfred's the commissioner, if you don't know. Um, did I say that? I don't know. I feel like, so, you know, if somebody is listening who doesn't follow sports, Rob Manfred's the commissioner of baseball. <laughs> so, and he came out, he's, oh, the fans are our number one priority. But you can't come out and say the fans are, the, are a top consideration, I think, were the words he used, when you're having the press conference to cancel games. And again, not postponing, not, there's no chance to reschedule. Uh, we're canceling. So players and whoever are not going to make that money back. And it's just disappointing. Like, I, I don't understand how they got here, how they let it get this far, but we are where we are. So I'll be watching more basketball. I'll be watching more hockey, uh, minor league baseball. I'll be watching that. I'm sure if there's college baseball on, I'll put that on, but it's just really disappointing the whole situation. So there you go with the MLB news. Let's talk something more fun. The Sixers are fun and I love it. It's really good. I, and again, I've followed the Sixers here and there over the last few years and I've read more, thanks to The Athletic, I've read more about the Sixers in the last two years than I have in my entire life. And uh, also thanks to Phil and Joel who will be on the show at some point in uh, maybe over the summer to do our big wrestling episode that we've been talking about every time they've come on the show. Um, I'm really having fun watching the Sixers. I mentioned the trade. James Harden from the Nets. 
for uh, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and draft picks, I guess. I think I said at the time, and I'm still kind of bummed that Seth Curry is not on the team anymore. Everybody else can, whatever. But yeah, James Harden seems to be having fun, and his defense is still, let's call it suspect at best. He doesn't play defense, but he's going to score points. He is going to open up space on the floor. He is going to, you know, basketball terms and whatnot, but he's going to make the team better. He already has, and uh, Joel Embiid loves playing with him. So I think that's really what you can hope for at this point is that your superstar MVP player really enjoys playing with the guys on the team, which seems dumb. Like, it seems like a weird thing to consider, but it's important. You don't want to have guys at odds on the floor together because then that's going to seep into the game. It's not going to go well, and the team's going to start losing, and it's going to be messy. But the Sixers are fun again. I'm having a really good time watching. Arthur likes basketball, apparently, all the noises and colors and whatever. Uh, maybe he doesn't care as much as I think he does, but I got nothing else to watch with him sports-wise. So <laughs> no baseball's on. So we got to watch basketball, and I'm really enjoying it. Go Sixers. Also, fun fact, the Brooklyn Nets are playing in Philadelphia March 10th, and Ben Simmons has not debuted for the Nets yet. I would bet money, not a lot of money because I'm not an idiot, but because I don't get not, I'm not an idiot. I'm, well, whatever. I don't gamble that much. But if I did, I would put down some money that Ben Simmons does not, not only does he not play in that game, I don't think he shows up to the building. Even if he has played previously, like if he plays in the next four days, there is no way he's playing on March 10th here in Philly. There's no, absolutely no way. I want it on record, whatever day it is you listen to this, there is no way he plays in that game. Absolutely not. Again, I'll take it a step further. He's not even going to show up. He won't be in the building. No way. Absolutely not. So there you go. That's Sixers. They're fun. I think they got a good shot. Uh, my friend Chris from, well, the headspace isn't a thing anymore, but he's been on the show through that. He's a Suns fan. We've been talking basketball. Danny Schmitz, big Bucks fan. We've been talking basketball. So it's nice for me to not only be into basketball again, but also to have people other than, you know, fellow Sixers fans. Hi, Mike. Hi, Phil. To talk to about it, right? Because people who are seeing it from the outside going, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're not just, you know, rose colored glasses with this thing. They're actually really good and really fun to watch. So thank you for that. I like the Suns. I like the Bucks. There you go. If your favorite team is doing well, I'm happy for you. If they're not doing well, I hope they turn it around. How's that? Did we cover everybody? I don't know. There you go. Uh, let's see. Baseball, Sixers, James Harden's really fun. Seems to enjoy himself so far. Who knows when he quits on this team? I don't know. But um, for now, we'll ride it out, and, uh, and I'm enjoying it so far. All right. So it's Wednesday for me, and I usually, if I hear from the captain about a Flyers update, it's not until Thursday. So I don't know if he's there yet. I do know he's very busy. He has a lot of things to do. And so he may be there. He may not. So we're going to cross our fingers and toes. And I know it's not good for the Flyers, but it'll be good for us if the captain is here because I just like to hear him talk about the Flyers. So, and I know you do too. So here we go. Good, sir. We're going to turn it over and hope he's there or you'll just hear a sound effect or whatever. But good, sir. The floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you, my friend, the Melting Path, the Next Level Network. We cover ourselves in case he's too busy or whatever, and that's fine. There you go. My thanks to, uh, to the captain for joining us, I hope. My thanks to Archers for the tune. You know, my thanks to everybody who getting me back into basketball. Thanks for that. I, you know, I love playing basketball. I've enjoyed basketball my whole life, and I love that I'm back in it. I love it. I mean, let's go. I'm into it. Um, anybody else we got? Ever thanks to everybody who weighed in on the hot TV mom question. Um, anything else? There's real news happening, but I'm not talking about it. Uh, because I, I got mad at the beginning. We don't need to do that again. So there you go. That's all the stuff. We're good, right? We don't have to thank anybody else, do we? Thanks to Domino's for getting me all mad at the top of the show for your, oh my God, for your active, oh, look how great we are. No, you're not. All right. Anyway, no, 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 no don't do that. So there we go. We're good. We're out of here. <laughs> TheMelticPat.com for all of my stuff. It's all up there. TheNextLevelNetwork.com for all of our stuff, what it's going on around here, all the things. Again, not going to list anybody because I'll forget people and they'll get mad or, the, you know, whatever. I don't want to do that. So that's all. We did it. We made it, y'all. Use guises. Yeah. G-Love and Special Sauce with cold beverage. 
They're going to play us out as they always do. Philadelphonic.com for more from them. How, how much worse could I have said that? Philadelphonic. There we go. That's all. We're good. This has been an A Boiler production. So until next time, my friends, have fun. Be safe. Thank a veteran. Wash your hands, wear your mask, get vaccinated when you can. And of course, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Thank you so much for listening. You've been inside the Melting Pat on the Next Level Network. Go crap open a cold one. <laughs>